You are hereby advised that the tips, tactics, stunts, and tricks displayed on our videos are performed by professionals in controlled environments such as closed ranges. Do not attempt to duplicate, recreate, or perform any of these at home, as personal injury or property damage may result. The producer of this video is not responsible for any such injury or damage. Second knot we're going to talk about this morning is the figure eight on a bite. Okay, this is where the magic starts happen. Before we go into tying the figure eight on a bite, I'm going to give you a heads up. We talked about in rope a little bit how strong it is and the different types of rope, but we also gave you a little heads up that once you start working with rope, specifically once you start tying in rope, uh, knots in rope, that rope becomes weaker. Okay, it's another reason why we choose the figure eight family of knots. Most of the knots we use from the figure eight family while they do weaken the rope, they don't weaken the rope as much as other knots may weaken the rope. On average, on average, each figure eight we tie into a rope weakens that rope by about 25%. The actual number, again, based on who you talk to, might be 27, might be 23. We're going to say 25. Okay, so for instance, you know, if you had, I'm going to do some quick math here. It's a little bit early, maybe not enough coffee, but say this rope was strong enough to hold 100 pounds. If we tied a figure eight on a bite, or figure eight on a uh, figure eight follow through into the knot, that's going to then change the strength of that rope to 75 pounds, meaning it's going to blow at 75 pounds. So again, that quick math, you got to be aware of it. Okay. So again, when we talk about these uh, uh, movie commandos that are repelling with 550 cord, do the math. If that rope breaks at 550 pounds and they start tying knots in it, it becomes significantly weaker. Okay. Something to think about. Figure eight on a bite. Okay. We did our figure eight foundation. And even though this, when we're done, it's going to look a little bit different, it's still the same movements. It's the exact same movements as doing the figure eight foundation. You're just going to do it with a bite of rope instead of just a straight tail. So our figure eight foundation, we just worked with this little single strand here, figure eight on a bite. We're going to create our bite of rope, B-I-G-H-T, and we're going to start there, okay, like so. We're going to try to tie it a little bit slow so you can see it. How I do mine, okay, I'll usually turn my hand like so. So again, here's the top of the rope, the bite, and I'll try to keep this together because we don't want this flopping around as we're doing a knot. Okay, same movements as the figure eight foundation. Bring it down, bring it around, and then up and through. And then dress it up. Let me tie that again here just because it So again, start with our bite of rope. I'll usually turn my hand like this. Bring it down. Bring it around. Up and through. And cinch it down. There's our figure eight on a bite. Now, when you do tie this, we'll talk a couple things and we'll tie it again just so we can watch again. At this point, that's a figure eight on a bite, more or less, okay? If you can get that movement down, if you can get that knot to that point, you're off to a good start. Okay, things you want to look for when you tie this knot, okay? This part right here, the bite of the rope, that's about the size you want right there. The typical rule of thumb that I tell people and what I've been told myself in some of the classes I've taken, you want this section here to be about the size of a carabiner, okay? The bite of the rope when you're done with your figure eight, you want that to be about the size of a carabiner. You don't want it really big. You don't want it so short that you can barely get a finger in there. About the size of a carabiner, okay? The tail of the rope, this section here that's coming out. Okay, typically people will say four to six inches. A really good, easy way to do it is just take your finger gun and do your finger gun. If you got a tail of rope that's about the size of a finger gun, you're in good shape. Okay, again, if you can get to this point with this knot, you're off to a really good start. Where the beauty of it comes and where the perfection and the art of it comes is getting it to look a little bit nicer. Okay, and by getting it to look a little bit nicer, meaning we want all these strands next to each other, cuddling, not crossing over. As you can see, when I tied this knot, from the front looks okay, but all of a sudden we look on the back and we have a pinch point there. You know, right here we're getting a little bit of a pinch point, okay? Not a huge deal, but it is, it is important. Style does matter. Uh, details do matter when you do this stuff. So as you tie these, as you start to get them down, again, when you're learning, if you can get to this point, you're doing really good. But if you want to get better, start figuring out how you can tie it 
a little bit cleaner. And get it looking a little bit nicer there on the back where they're cuddled, they're not creating pinches. Okay, something to think about, something to do. And again, at what point do you think you have a good understanding of this knot? If you're in the shower, in the dark, with a blindfold on, radio blasting, and your wife or spouse or whoever screaming at you and you can still tie this knot, probably got it down. Zert is a worldwide membership-based organization that uses zombie as a metaphor for any natural or man-made disaster that could occur in our lifetime. Your zombie could be hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, a deadly force encounter, or civil unrest. Zert is about being prepared, trained, and most importantly, armed with the proper mindset to see you and your family through to safety. Zert is not just an organization. It's a lifestyle. ZertNation.com